The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A number of years ago, one of my priest mentors said that while we're used to thinking of the word Advent as meaning coming, the word is directional as well. That we might better think of Advent as meaning coming toward. Well, that explains a lot. That might explain the sense that we all have this time of year of too much to do, of responsibilities to complete, of a little urgency of deadlines. And this year of the need to prepare for our Christmas as normal as possible, even in these not normal times of pandemic and isolation. In Advent, it sometimes seems that we're moving oddly in time. Yes, we're preparing for the coming of Christmas, the yearly celebration of the incarnation. We're preparing for the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. We prepare for the arrival of that baby in the manger. But Advent also has an eschatological dimension reminding us to prepare as well for the second coming of the Christ at the end of time. We heard those readings last week, reminding us to prepare, that no one knows the time, to keep awake. And at the same time, Advent is a time of waiting and of wilderness. Today, our readings speak of wilderness and of waiting expectantly and prepare us for the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, rather than the birth of a child. Today's gospel reading tells of John the Baptist who proclaims the coming of one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Mark's gospel ties both John's ministry and the beginning of the ministry of Jesus to the words of Isaiah that we just heard. The voice of one crying out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. In this short passage, Mark first connects this gospel with the prophet Isaiah who was writing at the end of the Babylonian exile. He then links John the Baptist to the wilderness, the place from which salvation comes. And he evokes the image of Elijah, the last of the great prophets, in his description of John, clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt coming out of the wilderness. All those images and the deep connection to the history of Israel would have been invoked in the hearers of the opening of Mark's gospel. 
The wilderness plays a large role in the stories of the Hebrew scriptures. The theme of wilderness times and wilderness travels recurs from the stories of Abraham through the Exodus, through the stories of the prophets, and through the Gospels as well. And that wilderness was nothing like what we think of as wilderness. Green, pristine, bird singing, a brook babbling in the background. That wilderness was a barren desert rocky, arid, where water was hard to find, a wasteland where life was uncertain. In the Bible, there are two perspectives to the wilderness. It was a place of escape for those who were threatened by others, a place to go to run away from problems. It was stark, arid, and inhospitable, where food and water were uncertain where life was tenuous. In the wilderness, anything could happen. The wilderness was a liminal place. The wilderness was where people encountered God and where they were formed into God's people. In the wilderness, after leaving Egypt, the Hebrews learned to be children of God. The wilderness was where one went to encounter God or to escape persecution. It wasn't a safe place, but it was a place where transformation could occur. And Advent can be a wilderness time for us, even in normal years. And this year is anything but normal. In this time of pandemic, it can feel like we're in the wilderness, that place of wandering and uncertainty. And like the wilderness in the Bible, this is a time for us when transformation can occur. It's a time for transformation in ourselves and in the church. For on the other side of this pandemic, the world we live in will also be transformed. The passage from Isaiah, unlike the earlier portions of Isaiah that we heard last week, is full of God's love and forgiveness. It's been used as the basis for hymns that we sing in Advent, both comfort, comfort ye my people, and there's a voice in the wilderness crying, are poetic rearrangements of this text. Handel used the passage extensively in Messiah. I cannot read this passage without hearing music of one sort or another in my head. It invokes for me those songs. And this passage is a song of hope and consolation and speaks of God's return to Jerusalem. This portion of Isaiah dates to the end of the Babylonian exile in the time shortly before the return of the exiles to Jerusalem. You know that whole story? Around 600 BCE, Jerusalem was under siege by the ba Babylonian armies. Between then and about 580 BCE, Jerusalem and the temple, the center of Judaism and its practice, were utterly destroyed. Over that 20 years, many of the Jews were killed and many others were taken captive. Only the peasants and the poor who worked the land were left in Judea. The king and his family, the religious leaders, the skilled and educated Jews were torn away from their homeland and held captive as exiles in Babylon. Those exiles lived, grew old, and died in Babylon. And it was several generations before the people were allowed by Cyrus of Persia to return to Jerusalem where they faced the daunting task of rebuilding the city and rebuilding the temple. The story of the Babylonian exile becomes a touchstone for displaced peoples and individuals, whether geographically displaced or metaphorically displaced, as we are now in this pandemic. Those exiles waited for generations, 
longing and hoping for a return to Jerusalem. They waited not knowing when they would return, but they waited expectantly, learning to sing God's praises in a strange land and living according to their covenant relationship with God. Most of us are also waiting, this time for the end of a pandemic. We hope for a time when it will be safe to return to gathering as a community, safe to spend time with friends and family. We wait and hope for a vaccine, for a dip in the infection rates, for some sign that life might return to something resembling normal. Yet like the early church, we are reminded that God's time is not our time and that God's vision for the world is a world where righteousness is at home. Perhaps like the exiles waiting in Babylon, we could consider what actions God would have us choose while we wait. Yet the waiting did come to an end for the Jews in Babylon. Those exiles did make the long trek through the wilderness to return to Jerusalem and did rebuild the city and the temple. They restored the temple worship of Yahweh. Most of our passage from Isaiah is written in divine passive. God's role will be leveled. God's glory will be revealed. Yet it was also instructions for those exiles and therefore for us as well. Prepare the way of the Lord. Repent. Know that God cares for all of time and all of creation. Know that even as we fade like the flower of the field, God endures. Prepare the way of the Lord. All four Gospels include this reference to Isaiah and associate with John the Baptist, each a little differently. John's Gospel tells of John the Baptist quoting this passage when John is asked, Who are you? by the priests and Levites. Both Matthew and Luke say that this passage describes John. But Mark? Mark leaves it to his hearers to make the connections between John and the quotation from Isaiah. He just begins his gospel by mashing together quotations from Exodus and Malachi and then Isaiah with the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Over the years, I've driven I-70 between here and Kansas City many, many times. There are stretches of that road where one side of the highway was built newly, but the other was just the old road paved over that was originally built as US Highway 40. The newly built side is relatively level but the older side follows the contours of the land. It wasn't all that long ago that leveling the hills for a highway, even with earth moving equipment, was just too much effort. Filling valleys and leveling mountains and hills must have sounded impossible to Mark's hearers or to Isaiah's. Yet that was their instruction prepare the path for God's return. Perhaps in this season of Advent, we are also given our instructions. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare for the inbreaking of God on our world. Prepare to live in God's kingdom. Amen.